Hello and welcome back to this channel. You are studying 11th physics chapter 4. We have started motion in a plane. The last topic of the previous video was about the definition of types of vectors. So today we will continue the topic with a new vector called unit vector. Unit means one. So the unit vector is a vector of unit magnitude which is drawn in the direction of given vector same direction keep in mind so how to find this unit vector so to find unit vector you just have to divide the given vector by its value and we know that value how we are writing in modulus so you see over here you can find that we have a unit vector of a you see this symbol okay so unit vector is equal to the original vector divided by divided by its modulus that means its value right now this symbol this specific symbol is pronounced as a caret or hat so we can say that is as a caret or a hat okay so any vector which uh, if we want to represent about a single vector then you just have to do cross multiplication of the unit vector with the magnitude or with the value of this vector so it is nothing but just a cross multiplication so vector a is also written as a caret into magnitude of a clear so this is the unit vector it is original vector divided by its magnitude that is known as unit vector now another set of vector is that is zero vector now what is a zero vector is it nothing no zero vector is ultimately a vector whose value we cannot determine that might be zero that is why its name is zero now why is it so important to have a zero vector because you see a zero or a null vector is a vector that has no magnitude and an arbitrary direction means random or no direction so how it is obtained the vector zero vector is obtained by adding two vector of equal magnitude but of opposite direction then and only they can nullify their effects and that is why the resultant vector can be a zero vector so zero vector is represented by putting an arrow over the number zero you can see in the bracket zero and vector symbol now as the value of zero vector is zero the direction cannot be shown that is why we have written just for formality we have written that it is having arbitrary direction now very important properties of zero vector see when a vector is added to zero vector we get the same vector that means let us suppose vector a plus zero gives vector a only when a real number is multiplied by zero vector we get zero vector only like 2 into zero vector is equal to zero vector when a vector is multiplied by 0, the resultant is a 0 vector. That means vector a into 0 gives 0 vector. Clear? So these were few properties. Uh, when uh, in the lower standard, you might have studied some properties of multiplication or addition by 0. The same will be applied over here. But the difference is we will add vector word after 0. Now, physical example of how can a 0 vector exist? You say position vector of a particle which is lying on the origin. So at origin what are the values? 0, 0. So if a vector we are representing that will be a 0 vector. Another example I would like to give uh, that is the displacement vector of any stationary object that will again be a 0. Clear? So these are few examples where uh, we can use zero vector also uh, another example let me add it before we move that acceleration vector of an object which is moving with uniform velocity so object moving with uniform velocity doesn't have any vector which is of acceleration that is why acceleration is a zero vector of uniform velocity so these way we can show that zero vectors exist even though they are nothing now multiplication of vector this is also again very simple if you understand it utilizing the mathematical concept when a vector is multiplied by a real number 
we get another vector whose magnitude is that times the magnitude of original vector. So real number, it might be 2, it might be 3, it might be minus, right? So that times magnitude will become of the original vector. Let us say if it is a positive number, that real number is a positive number, the direction of the new vector will be same as the original one. If it is positive, direction will be same. But if it is negative, the direction will become opposite. Now let us try to understand this by figure. Suppose vector A is to be multiplied by real number 2. So the new vector that will be obtained will be twice the length. Okay. So here we have vector A which is of this much length. You see we have vector B which is twice. So vector B equals to 2 into A. So the length will become twice and you see the direction because 2 is a positive number. Okay. So even if it is 3A, 3 times, that means the length will increase 3 times but the direction will remain the same. But now if the vector A is to be multiplied by real number minus 2, what will happen? Suppose a new vector c is equals to minus 2a. So length will become twice but you see due to this negative direction the arrow is pointing towards the opposite. So this is how geometrically we can understand the significance of the sign. Okay. So this is the multiplication of vector. Now most important topic of the introduction part that is addition or composition or the resultant we can say any of these words of vectors the resultant of two or more vector is that single vector which produces the same effect as the individual vectors together will produce so ultimately what we are doing in order to add in after adding of those two vectors we are producing a new vector which has the combined effect of those two vectors right so this process of adding two or more vectors is called composition of vector composition is just a name of process of addition right finding the resultant now as vectors are dependent on direction so they can be added geometrically we can see them how they are added up so for that we have three different laws of vector addition which can be used to add two or more vectors having any kind of inclination. Inclination means even if they are at any angle, we can add them geometrically. So for that, we have three different laws. So first two laws, that is triangle law of vector addition and parallelogram law of vector addition, we will see uh, with the figure in this video only. Polygon law, we will continue with the next video. So now let us start with the triangle law of vector addition. So starting with the first law that is triangle law of vector addition. So note the statement very carefully. If two vectors can be represented both in magnitude and direction by two sides of a triangle which are taken in the same order then the resultant is represented completely both in magnitude and direction by the third side of the triangle taken in the opposite order. Now there are many words in this which you need to understand. First of all that we have been given or we will be given two different vectors in different directions. right? So both will be having some magnitude and some direction. Now we are having this triangle law that means ultimately what we are doing we are forming a triangle right and a triangle has three sides we all know so first of all our triangle will be having two sides because two vectors will be given and you see in the same order that means whatever the angle will be we have to take care of that angle okay now the third side will be our resultant side, the resultant, the addition side. And that will be same in magnitude and direction taken in the opposite order. Now let us understand by the figure to be picture perfect about this law. Now let us take a vector A, right? You see the direction and the length, okay? Now here we have vector B. You see vector A 
doesn't have any angle any inclination but vector b has some kind of inclination it is at an angle now let us form a triangle based on this so for triangle we need the first side so here i have drawn the triangle now very carefully understand second vector tail the tail of second vector that is this part must lie on the head of the first one then only we can complete the triangle so what i did is i kept the tail of the second vector exactly on the head but keeping the angle same this is very important i am taking the inclination same so now you can see our triangle is almost there with two sides we just have to form the third side right so the third side will be the addition of these two clear so let us see so let us see about the third one you can see we have taken the third side as if we have to complete the triangle but you see the direction you can see vector a is going on this side vector b is going on this side so can we say that he from a to b we have gone anti clockwise right so the order is anti clockwise but the resultant the third side will have the opposite order that means it must be the arrow must be drawn according to clockwise okay so that is how this triangle is complete so what is the red arrow showing it is showing the resultant of addition of these two that means r equals to vector a plus vector b so this was the triangle law of vector addition clear now let us see parallelogram law of vector addition now the statement goes by this if two vector can be represented both in magnitude and direction by two edges or uh, and the sides of parallelogram drawn from a common point then their resultant is completely represented both in magnitude and direction by the diagonal of the parallelogram drawn from that point only so you see we have a common point over here so they will be coinitial vectors right so two vectors will be given uh, though they might be very different but still we have to draw them from a common point then what we have to do the resultant the third one will be the diagonal the diagonal will represent the addition of these two right so parallelogram four sides are there and two diagonals are there so we will draw two sides will complete the other two as well but the diagonal is main so let us see we have one a vector and one b vector and what we have to do we have to draw them from the same point so you see vector a vector b same point you can see over here this is the same point from where they are drawn so from here only i will be drawing the diagonal you see clear so two sides and a diagonal what is this diagonal showing it is showing resultant of vector a and b clear so this is half of the parallelogram which we have completed so let us try to complete the parallelogram so these two are extra just because we want a parallelogram so we have completed it so i have drawn in dotted but the main three you can see over here this diagonal is showing the addition of vector a and vector b so this is the resultant right so here we did a parallelogram and in the previous we saw triangle clear so this is the second law of vector addition now you may imagine that how in real or practical life this is applicable so you see real life examples only two examples i might be giving which will be very easy to understand you see the man with bow and arrow right you see this 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 thread over here that is stretched just because we want the arrow to go straight now apply the same logic the law of parallelogram can you find two different vectors force vectors or whatever vectors it is they are in this two direction so you see two vectors over here and the arrow even though force is there in this direction and this direction where will the arrow move 
the arrow will move forward so you see the resultant is always in the direction of the diagonal clear so you see this is nothing but a real life example of law of parallelogram right according to the parallelogram law we the diagonal where the arrow is will be the resultant of these two force vectors clear another example let us see you see this beautiful bird over here and we know that birds flap their wings and move forward right fly forward so you can see these wings they are nothing but a representation of the force so they apply force through wings which goes like this okay and what is the resultant you see the resultant is exactly and in the uh, this direction of the diagonal and this is the resultant direction where they move right so this was all about the addition or we can say composition of vectors and uh, we did nothing but we added up various vectors given and we use triangular law and parallelogram law and in the next video we may continue with the polygon law okay so till then take care and do revision very properly thank you